A pleasure to me all at last. Welcome back once again to films I'm willing to talk about again. I've come around with something different here. Nickelodeon related material. Yeah, that's right. What we're going to do here is we're going to talk about a certain movie that came around Nickelodeon times. Yeah, basically, an era of Nickelodeon had come and gone mainly between the late 90s and up until the mid-2010s when they basically went through a bit of a downfall period. And while this didn't completely upset them to the point where they're no longer of relevance, they still haven't necessarily fully recovered from this whole little thing that went down between 2015 and 2016. But anyways, in 2015, sometime before the likes of their little downgrade that went down, especially when they lost their famous hotel in Orlando, and a bunch of other things that went down merchandise-wise, SpongeBob, Sponge Out of Water, was a movie that came around and gave us a whole new level of appreciation for the Spongebob franchise as a whole. Because this was, believe it or not, a way to bring them to live action. Yeah, of course this wasn't the first movie that they did, no. There was a 2004 movie made five years after the likes of Spongebob Squarepants' first episode, which aired in July of 1999. It's hard to imagine that I'm basically slightly older than that of the whole show itself, and even more so when you get to know the fact that I basically grew up with Nickelodeon, mainly because of SpongeBob's success, mainly because of how many movies were made as a result of its success, not just with SpongeBob or otherwise, and also mainly because Nickelodeon got so big and successful due in part to SpongeBob SquarePants. They basically had their own Mickey Mouse, in contrast to what Disney could have, what Universal could have, and even what another newer creator out there known as DreamWorks could possibly have. Basically, this was before some DreamWorks related stuff would come around, but even then, SpongeBob SquarePants was quite a big success. It basically targeted the world of merchandising to a whole new level that was beyond anything Nickelodeon and the rest of us could have possibly ever expected. Anyways though, Sponge Out of Water, which takes place 16 years after the events of, well, the first Spongebob episode, but not entirely in a continuity related stuff, no. Continuity is hard to explain when it comes to a timeline of Spongebob events from past to present to future, all the way to this very point in history when they're still going with the show. So, yeah. Anyways, Spongebob Out of Water is a live action film, but it mainly starts with the likes of animation, just as you'd expect from their usual style when it comes to Spongebob Squarepants. It begins in a unique manner with Plankton's usual plot of exploiting the Krusty Krab by attempting to locate their secret recipe. Yeah, the formula that is hidden inside of the restaurant itself. And Mr. Krabs had been keeping it safe for all along, but Plankton has come to no effort to claim a hold of it because all of his plans so far had failed. But this time, he plans on bringing an entire war to Krusty Krab itself. And Mr. Krabs is certainly ready for it because he has SpongeBob SquarePants, his most loyal worker, a popular cook within the Krusty Krab itself, and of course his best friend, Patrick Starr, they both get together to prepare for warfare against Plankton and the Chum Bucket. In this instance, we got Plankton dive bombing in with ketchup, mustard, mayo. It's just pandemonium, not like anything you would have expected. It's almost like they spoofed an entire war film. I guess you could say that with the likes of war films like Saving Private Ryan, Platoon, Forrest Gump, We Were Soldiers, and other such stuff like that that related to warfare. This was quite a unique change of pace when it came to war-related cliches. Yet the generalized formula pretty much remained the same. Whoever came up victorious was obviously the winner of the war itself. But no matter which way you look at it, they were launching pickles at each other, throwing condiments, and unleashing various different techniques at each other in quite a unique way. Like they took a war, a restaurant, and Spongebob Squarepants 
and mashed them all together into one epic scene. This certainly was quite a way to start a Spongebob movie, by any means. Compared to the 2004 film, which it had a lot of unique ways to create a film adaptation of an iconic show that at the time had been around for only five years, but now that it had been 16 years since the show first started, this was certainly quite a nice change of pace. But yet, the usual juju still happens here. Plankton, of course, once again, fails the battle against the Krusty Krab. He eventually gets captured and tied down by SpongeBob and company. And Mr. Krabs proceeds to put on a pair of headphones, but not before talking about some sort of weird joke. Yeah, nobody apparently finds it funny, but apparently SpongeBob himself finds it hilarious. His unique laugh, which of course was made by a man of a thousand voices, Tom Kenny, definitely comes through so hard that it causes Plankton to start crying for help. I mean, this is definitely what you call Spongebob material, and it's still very funny to watch. I mean, you got a torture scene that is made so well that it actually does an even, even better job than I anticipated, but yet it's still on the edge to the point where it can still be good for children to watch. I mean, Spongebob's laugh alone seems just as well remembered as a variety of other sounds that have been generated by many characters over the years. Like, how about those voices that Frank Welker is able to make that made Curious George, Slimer, and various other characters all over, you know? That kind of voice is just recognizable, but in any case, like I've said, Plankton is being greatly tortured, but then it apparently comes to no surprise that, well, guess what? The formula ends up turning up missing. Plankton has no idea what happened to it, neither does SpongeBob or anyone else, but the Krusty Krab itself is still in a state of confusion as to what's really going on over there in the back room where the three were inside when the Krabby formula was right there locked up. Of course, it does turn up missing, and Mr. Krabs is willing to find it at any cost. He's even willing to give out free Krabby Patties, or better yet, a slight discount. <laughs> yeah, quite a way to change his mind on that part. In any case though, it's up to him and everybody to go find the formula. But after some time passes, things really start to get rather boiled. Because guess what? Swindling goes down, and it's crazy. I mean, this basically forces the likes of Spongebob and Plankton to run out of the town. I mean, they both have to seclude themselves in a certain area to avoid being found and possibly tortured to death. They both come up with a plan to be able to head on back in time to hopefully retrieve the formula itself. And well, it eventually turns out to be successful but not before some things begin to take place. They of course come across a dolphin known by the name of Bubbles, played by actor Matt Berry, where apparently it's his job to look over the solar system and make sure everything's in play, but he had been having to use the restroom for some time. SpongeBob volunteers to help him. He goes and does his business, but unfortunately, two planets end up colliding with each other. Turns out Saturn and Jupiter have smashed into each other, disintegrating them both. And Bubbles is mad. <laughs> I mean, this again is yet another nice change of pace. I mean, you have two different forms of animation coming together with, I will say, the animation they chose for Bubbles in this exact scene is pretty unique. It's a bit of a slow polarization, kind of like if there was a low frame rate at this point which I do appreciate. It's a pretty simplistic way to bring things together, but at the same time, it does feel a bit simple by all means. But it's still great to work with nonetheless. Of course, even after they do manage to retrieve the formula, they end up losing it again. The formula actually gets launched out of the water far off into the distance, where it apparently lands in the real world. Yeah. And didn't you know the real world supposedly coincides with the world of Spongebob? 
And it is true that Bikini Bottom technically is centered somewhere near Texas, likely within the Gulf of Mexico. Because after all, one of the characters involved is a squirrel known as Sandy Cheeks, but played by Carolyn Lawrence. We of course can't forget Mr. Lawrence, who of course plays Plankton, the arch nemesis of Krusty Krabs, his own owner, Mr. Krabs, still played by Clancy Brown, whom will always be fondly remembered for various roles. Yeah, I know he's still alive and all that. Then you have Bill Fadgerbake, who plays Patrick, and Tom Kenny, as I've stated earlier, plays SpongeBob. So, that's again, a good way to piece together the cast in terms of the main members, Spongebob, Plankton, Krabs, Patrick, and Sandy. They of course make their own venture out into the real world to find the formula once and for all and hopefully settle the differences between Krabs and Plankton. And when they do, it turns out to be quite an adventure. Coincidentally, however, though, there was a pirate whose ship actually turns into a road vehicle. It apparently is some kind of restaurant that he offers to the public. But secretly, much like Mr. Krabs, he has his own devious intentions. A bit of a shrewd businessman kind of feel, much like how Mr. Krabs has been known for for a long time. The fact that Mr. Krabs has been known for a lot of different schemes that it would probably make himself quite a villain in comparison to Plankton, whom he's always played for as a villain compared to himself, apparently this pirate, once again, does have his own intentions taking place. When they finally come through, it's certainly quite a ride to showcase. But I will say, by most accounts, that this movie was quite a unique piece up until this very point when the final battle takes place. Yeah, just as we've seen on the posters, Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Krabs, Plankton, and Sandy all turn into superheroes. They're able to exude their own power-ups, including launching ice cream cones and bubbles enhanced strength and speed it's a unique battle that i would have never expected to happen i mean spongebob and company turning into heroes like that fighting a pirate whose pirate ship turns into a road vehicle i mean it's just crazy and on top of that it's over a silly formula in a bottle i mean this is the kind of ridiculousness that i certainly have found rather charming Despite being 16 years old in my part, compared to the movie which was also 16 years old, compared to the show which at the time the movie's release was at 16 years old, it's no surprise that I dig this film so well I consider it to be more than just a bit of a masterpiece. And it should come as no surprise either. But in any case though, after the defeat of the pirate takes place, he gets launched off to a small sandy island with palm trees and whatnot. There of course are talking seagulls around, and the end just solidifies the differences between crabs and plankton fully settled. So of course, that's my overall take on the film itself. Sponge Out of Water was a great piece that I've always remembered, and was certainly a great change of pace compared to all the other stuff that's happened within Spongebob Squarepants as a whole. So I'll see you guys with some more content coming soon, and do be sure to stay tuned for other stuff that I have planned as well. No tricks uh, to be playing on you.